Hey, chiropractors, welcome to Modern Chiropractic Mastery with your host, Dr. Kevin Christie, where we discuss the latest in marketing, business, and professional growth with some of the leading experts in the industry. Hey, docs, welcome to another episode of Modern Chiropractic Mastery. Today, I have another exciting interview. This is with Dr. Josh Satterley. Not the first time or the last time you will hear from him on our podcast. He's been a regular of the show. And today we dive into a, a little bit of a new topic uh, where we we obviously talk about patient communication quite a bit, but we really talk about it from a digital perspective. What can we be doing with the digital tools out there to communicate better with our patients, but it not feel like it's, you know, digital and they feel like they're getting even better touch points than they were and that they are getting from most of their healthcare providers. And Josh has just a lot of insights and wisdom in this, and he shares a personal story that really got him involved in this type of communication with, um, you know, his clients he works with and his own settings, and we try to tease out a lot of the specifics that you can be doing in your practice to enhance communication and, and ultimately provide better care, better outcomes, and a better experience for the patient and everybody involved, and uh, I found it to be a very informative interview. One of the best things I, I get out of interviewing experts on this podcast is that I can take some of this information and apply it to my own practice. And, and this is something that uh, we're really trying to implement and improve consistently, even to the point where we, uh, this summer, changed our EHR system to be more compatible and more digital friendly for our patients. And so a great interview with Dr. Josh Satterley. Before we get into that, I want to share with you our virtual summit, our practice accelerator summit. I'm really excited about it. Uh, Dr. Bobby Maybe and I of FTCA, we've collaborated on the Chiropractic Success Academy since 2018. And usually every year we do a virtual summit. We didn't do one last year, but we're back at it. And I'm excited about this one. Him and I sat down and really wanted to put together a curriculum for you and then bring in some presenters that match up with those um, expertise topics. And then we also had some expert, you know, providers and, and, and leading thought provoking people to bring their wisdom. And then we would tailor a presentation around that. And we've, I think we've done a great job of it. We wanted to keep it at 12 presentations for you. And just kind of looking at it, I realized we, we had three distinct tracks. We didn't set out for that. But ultimately, we did have three distinct tracks. That's clinical expertise, practice development, and marketing. And the first one I want to just spotlight in this little introduction is the clinical expertise track. We're excited to have Greg Cook, Brett Winchester, and Taylor Premer com combining on a topic, Jay Greenstein, and Chris Chippendale. Greg Cook's going to talk about stacking your vital information with a movement point of view. Brett and Taylor are going to talk about beyond clinical expertise, the intangibles necessary for success in the treatment room. Jay's going to talk about adjusted reality, three game-changing secrets of AI and digital care delivery. I've seen him talk about that in person, and it's very exciting information. And then we have Chris Chippendale, the 95% foolproof plan, discussing ethical and effective treatment plans without ever feeling like you're selling. You can register for this for free. That is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash C-S-A summit. You can register for free. You can view those and the other eight presentation on the weekend of October 6th and 7th. If you can't watch all of them and you want to upgrade for $38, you can upgrade for lifetime access plus some bonuses. And then we have another VIP level upgrade that's got all kinds of great benefits to it. And you can have access to these consistently and review them and take your time with them. So check that out at bit.ly forward slash CSA Summit. Without further ado, here is my interview with Dr. Josh Satterley. Before we get to today's show, I'm excited to tell you about a great product that will help your patients find quicker relief and help you get better outcomes. Stop playing clinical is a great way to provide a safe, effective pain relief alternative to NSAIDs and opioids while you diagnose and treat the underlying cause. It works on contact to provide fast, long-lasting pain relief from sprains, strains, bruises, arthritis, muscle aches, joint, and back pain. How does it do that? 
Stop Pain Clinical has 10% menthol plus MSM and glucosamine. Great for joint pain. It is formulated with penetration enhancers and skin conditioners, so it works fast, feels great, and it is sweat resistance. And also, the spray is awesome with kinesiology tape, so your athletes will love it. You can just spray that right on before you put the tape. Phenomenal combination. They also have this great new migraine and headache relief topical. I know I've been using it. My wife's been using it. You place a little bit of the cream right onto that deep occipital as the base of the skull. Really helps give you some relief from that unrelenting headache and migraine, so great for your patients. You can learn more about Stop Pain Clinical at S-T-O-P-A dot I-N forward slash M-C-M, and you get a free intro pack of Stop Pain Clinical products. Again, that's S-T-O-P-A dot I-N forward slash M-C-M. Great news, too, is Stop Pain Clinical topical analgesics are available exclusively through chiropractors and other healthcare professionals, so they have another great reason to visit you and tell their friends. All right, got Josh Satterley on the show again, not the first and definitely not the last. Uh, excited to catch up. Uh, uh, according to him, this is the only time we get to talk, so uh, here we go, <laughs> once once a year, right? Well, Kevin, if you didn't do 87,000 things within chiropractic, I, I think maybe we would talk more often, but that's the downside of having uh, friends like you that are so uber successful, man. Well, you know, the the interesting part about being in our 40s is um, we're, we're kind of a hybrid group. And and I've got some holdovers to to guys that actually still talk on the phone. And, and you come from that ilk of Gen X where it's like you still will call someone randomly. And, and there's not a lot of you left yet, but it works out for you. Oh yeah. I'm going to carry that to the day I die because like, you know, there, there are two great losses I think in society recently. Uh, and you'll know this as a Gen Xer went through, you went to college in Florida, private voicemail, I think is a, such a sad thing because there's nothing greater than when you knew that your buddy was at home, you know, uh, with someone and you could talk through their answering machine, kind of make an announcement to the house about what you knew about them, what you knew was going on or whatever. And I feel bad that my my kids will never know the glory of busting on your friend through their, you know, through their answering machine. So <laughs> that's, it's kind of that's sad a good that, one. that that yeah, that that's gone off. And you know, texting also, uh, as effective as it is, it just doesn't give you the same ability to really emotionally dig into your buddy, you know, as oh, I, as you once I could. I you agree. Know, 100%. It it. Yeah. Absolutely. But no, it's good to to catch up, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, we run in the same circles. One of the reasons I, I reached out to you actually to, to, to di- get on this podcast. So that's my way of having a conversation with you. Uh, Fantastic. because I've just, I've been talking to, you know, I talked to a lot of chiropractors like you do and the, the clinic gym hybrid gets brought up a lot. Uh, yeah. a lot of times they'll, they'll come to me with, um, thoughts on some marketing around it and that type of stuff. And and I know, you know, that as well. And, uh, I, I always feel like we need a kind of an update, you know, like an update yeah. show well, as it relates to the clinic gym hybrid or some faction of that, right? I've got some yeah. people doing some unique things and uh, I wanted to touch base with you. So what's new in, in the CGH world? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the clinic gym hybrid program is, is always growing. Um, it's getting better and better. I think we've, we're now somewhere around 55 to 61. I can't figure it out, but 55 to 61 of facilities like we have directly helped start or, or add on the gym to their facility. So that's, that's super exciting. We, uh, you know, when you're talking about marketing, it's funny, as you know, I think it's so important for people to realize what marketing they're really good at or just exudes out of them. I'm a talker. I like talking to people. I like being around people. And, uh, our mutual friend, Dan Leonard was like, dude, why don't you have live events? You love talking to people. You love going out. So we started that. We've had over 220 registrations for live events. Uh, We have actually the next one is coming up at his clinic and people are coming out to those live events. They're loving it. And I think we're setting them on the right path to get going on this clinic gym hybrid. Because the thing that drives me the most nuts is, you know, running into somebody I see three years ago, oh man, I'm going to start my, my, you know, I'm going to add on the gym and then see him three years later at a Parker event or something. And, oh man, I'm, I'm, you know, in the next six months, I'm going to start my gym and I'm sure I'll see him five years from now. Oh man. In the next six months, you know, and I I just want to be like, dude, do it. 
be like Kevin. Like Kevin told me he was going to start a mastermind. Boom. It happens. Kevin told me about the CSA. Boom. It happens. Like no grass grows under Kevin Christie's feet, man. <laughs> well, you know, it's actually, we had a coaching call today, a, a group coaching call, and we did a three-year vision planner. And it was something that I said, it's like, it's, I think too many people unfortunately have a dream and not a vision. And, you know, yeah. they, it, and I think a big distinction between that is uh, when you do have a vision, you then have to actually reverse engineer the steps to to do it and then do that. Mm -hmm. Whereas a dream uh, obviously is just like, yeah, I'm, I want to do that. I want to do that. Or uh, interesting enough, I, I like uh, telling this story in our last mastermind, Lindsay Muma was kind of dinging us all every time we said, uh, I want to do this or I want to do that. And she was saying, you know, it's all about language. And it's like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do mm. that. Uh, I still will trick myself verbally by accidentally saying I want to do this, but just it, inherently when I, when I do get clear on a vision, I, I do it. I may use the wrong language around it, but luckily something subconsciously overrides that. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's important. And I think that's a, a, a something that you, you hit on is that, you know, it's one thing to say, it's another thing to do. And, and, and too many people are saying and not doing it. And, and, and we got to get that sure. definitely changed. It is funny too, when, you know, all of us have fears about what we want to do or how we want to grow and man, action eliminates so many fears. You know, you just start walking in that direction. And all of a sudden, like those fears just drift away or they, you realize they're never a big deal anyways. And, uh, you know, during COVID, I, I remember talking to a person who was a client before and still client now. And he's like, well, with all the changes going on and uh, I don't know if it's safe to, to add on square footage, blah, blah, blah. And I talked to him maybe 90 days later and somewhere in there, he decided to hell with it. Like if I'm going to go bankrupt, I'm going to go bankrupt trying to add on, not trying to be smaller. And both are completely possible. Right. And so he just decided to do that and got after it. And now his, um, he was a, uh, talked to him maybe in the last 30 days and his gym is making is bringing us in as much revenue as his clinic and it was just that decision to like get started and and go forward and he said like as soon as i did that uh this woman who wanted to become a trainer joined me the, you know my front desk staff joined me the the other docs in my office they were totally down with it and pe you know i think as human beings we're just looking for that that direction sometimes yeah no absolutely and you know i obviously everybody always talks about, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and, and there's all those nice little cliches for it, but uh, yeah. it, it's true. And sometimes that uneasy feeling uh, is that you're stretching yourself, but on the other side of that is, is that next level and you'll get comfortable with that. And then you, you kind of move on to the next one for sure. Uh, yeah. And you, you gotta be honest with yourself, right? Yeah. Yep. So, and we're incredibly adaptable. I mean, you see it in patient rehab and you see it in business plans, right? Like as soon as you give us a little bit of a, bolstering or stability the next things are are then possible so i feel yeah. like we're getting very ethereal here but anyways no we are because i think it sets up for good conversation because uh yeah. you know i just think the mindset's a big part of it but uh yeah it's not the not the full topic of, of today's show um but love love chatting about that stuff for sure all right docs here is a new opportunity for you from darcy sullivan of propel she is our seo specialist in helping out many chiropractors uh, with their search engine optimization and making sure Google is finding you and getting you new patients. It's amazing how many new patients chiropractors can get and are getting when they do uh, the SEO right and a few other things. And Darcy is offering a free SEO workshop just for chiropractors. And you can sign up for that at bit.ly bit.ly slash propel MCM. That is bit.ly bit.ly propel MCM modern chiropractic marketing, right? And so check out that link. And we're going to have you go over five SEO secrets to owning the first page of Google uh, without buying ads. And Darcy's going to give that free workshop one hour to really help grow your practice and start churning new patients from the ever mighty Google, which is still king in the online marketing. So check that out at bit.ly slash propel MCM for the one hour free workshop. What else, what yeah. else is new? I know you got a whole lot going on and you and I were doing a little bit of pre-chat and it sounds like uh, you, you've, you've kind of found a, a real issue in, in medicine in general. We can kind of label it that and, and then a, 
are, are applying a solution to that. So what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we, when, whenever we'd talk to people about starting their clinic, Jim Hyber and the people that would, you know, add on the space and hire a trainer and everything, there were some that did just okay. And then there were some that did extraordinary. I mean, I'll use Kirk yeah. Mason up in North Dakota as an example, just absolutely extraordinary growth guy, you know, added a gym to his clinic, grew out of that. Now he owns a separate gym, uh, 2,500 square feet down the street, like a mile down the street because he needed all the space. And then he's building another clinic with a gym attached. Like the guy just can't stop. Like he's incredible. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that takes action. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it was all, I always sat there and wondered like, how come some do okay and some do really well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and one thing that I noticed about them is, you know, they, they, you could say it's marketing, but they just communicated the idea of the gym as part of clinical care to mm -hmm. every single person that ever came in their office. There was nobody leaving their office that was going, I wonder what I do after I, you know, get treated here. Like it was, that's part of it. Whereas the people who were just doing okay. We're like, Oh, we have this other, this additional service. Right. And, um, and it really set the tone for that. Well, that was kind of pre COVID. And then I had another experience during that same time that kind of just threw me for a loop. I had this longtime mentor and friend named Ryan. Uh, Ryan's a 45 year old guy, just a super, super guy. Um, spoke on stages at a bunch of different conferences. He was a Mormon dude and he'd like led Sunday school. He was a assistant Bishop. I have some term for it in his church. Like the point I'm trying to make this dude talked to, all kinds of people in all different formats his entire life, right? So Ryan goes to a doctor complaining about low back pain. And he he didn't live in my town, but goes to a doctor complaining about low back pain, um, gets treated, doesn't really help. Goes to a chiropractor, gets treated, doesn't really help. Goes to a PT, gets treated, doesn't help. To just make this long story shorter, he went to seven different providers none of whom uh, realized that he had stage four colon cancer that had metastasized to his spine. So that was the cause of his pain, right? And by the time they discovered it, finally his uh, a primary care provider kind of started asking him some questions. And one of the things that came up, he's like, you know, kind of said like, I didn't really answer that before because i was kind of nervous or i didn't really i wasn't really truthful before because i was kind of nervous well you know when we ask these red flag questions the the situation is we're asking red flag questions at in the first five minutes of our first experience with these people ever right this is like the first yeah. appointment and i'm like in any other part of society if you're on a date or you were you know talking about a getting a car loan or anything do we ask the hardest questions in the first five minutes of the first meeting it's like, no, we build up rapport and then we ask these questions. Mm -hmm. Anyways, sad story. Ryan, his cancer was found too late and he ended up passing away like a year later. And it drove me bonkers, Kev. Like it drove me bonkers that here's a guy that was a great communicator. And yet essentially communication is a lack of communication was failed him. And he, he nobody found out that he had this thing going on, even though he did have some red flags and and some evidence of it, like blood in a stool and nighttime pain. And I'm just like, how does this happen? And, um, you know, when, so I did what I think a lot of people listening would do. Like I, I kind of dove into like research about patient communication and where it falls off in, in PubMed and like, where are these issues? Right. And kind of discovered some interesting factors and some, some, uh, some important you know, whatever we're going to say frameworks, I guess that, mm -hmm. that are, are good for people to realize. But when it comes down to it, the care we deliver is really just like three parts. Like you got to be great at diagnosis. You got to be great at treatment. And the last part is you got to be great at communication. And I would say communication is the one that's going to either grow your practice or shrink it. Right. You can do all the, you can do all the right treatments on somebody. You can get all the diagnoses, right. But if you're not kind of talking through it and reassuring them and then asking at the right time for, uh, review or referral or, you know, what's next. I don't think you'll grow as much as those who really communicate well. Mm -hmm. So basically I've been diving into patient communication lately. That's yeah. the short answer. 
<laughs> no, I mean, yeah. it's, it's so true, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, it can be tragic when it, when it doesn't yeah. happen the way it should. I wouldn't have looked into it had my friend not died. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's, um, and I, I know there's probably multiple stories like that and it's, it's just, uh, yeah. it's never easy to, to take in the best of circumstances. And when then there's a failure point, it's, it's just even yeah. worse. And, and it's really just, uh, it, it's, there's no room for it. Uh, and I get, I get how it happens. Um, uh, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. Uh, and so what were some of the things that you've kind of looked at and how applying that to say the, the chiropractic practice, uh, yeah. or the, or the gym model, what, what are some of the things you've done to bridge that gap from, general medicine overall to to what we do yeah it's a good question because um you know we as chiropractors have a ton of advantages i guess like the fact that we physically put our hands on basically every single patient builds a relationship so much so much versus if you know i'm sure you've been to the doctor where they stand at the door and basically hand you a prescription mm -hmm. and you're like i don't even you know we didn't really connect or you know i don't feel that that deep of a relationship with you. So we have those, those, um, advantages, but one thing too, is to go back to like fundamentals of, you know, I know you're, um, TPI trained and SFMA and so am I. And it's like, I think the biggest thing about those is that we just cover the fundamentals of human movement. And if we yeah. can't check off the fundamentals, like do not proceed, you know, don't pass go. Mm -hmm. So with communication, I would say every listening, like you could do a quick audit on how good your communication is by, are you, communicating in a way with your patients that would work if you communicated that way at home. Mm -hmm. So I always use this, like if your EMR sends out like one way text messages and just like announces, you know, you, know, you have an appointment, Kevin, your appointment is Wednesday at 4 PM. And if the person replies, like it never gets to you. Right. It's very common in EHRs. Um, but can you imagine how long that would work with your wife? Like, Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm coming home, make the pot roast, you know, like, and she's replying like, screw yourself. But she, you know, just comes back like message undeliverable. Like it wouldn't work, right? Yeah. So I, I call that bullhorning people. That's when we're just making these announcements, but it's not true communication, right? Mm -hmm. And then again, principally like, so are you truly communicating with your patients or setting up systems and processes? And you usually need a different system to do that. And two-way text messaging is great because it's more efficient. Uh, for your office, your office staff can handle about 60 text-based communications an hour versus a phone call. You can handle like 10 or 12, you know? So make sure your two-way text communication, which is how 98% of the people we know communicate with all their friends and family right now, right? Yep. And then I would say like, again, principally go back. If it's really important for that patient to show up to your office, how would you treat the how would you communicate with the person in your family that is the most difficult to communicate with? So let me say it differently. If you were taking your grandmother to a new doctor, right? And you're like planning on taking her Wednesday at noon. And then last minute your kid gets sick and you got to take him to the hospital. So you're like, grandma, you're on your own, right? You knew that you couldn't help her go to the office. What would you do to ensure she made it to the right office at the right time? And so these things I think are just, we're just using those situations to highlight these ways we should communicate, but mm -hmm. we call it, you want a fancy term prognostic communication. Like what is the problem they're going to run into and then communicate before that and doing these things build up such a huge relationship with our patients. So for example, if your grandma was going to office and I've been to your office, I'll just use yours. It's what a three, three story building two, and has like yep. two story, and, but there's parking like on multiple sides. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I took a picture from the street and like, grandma, this is what it looks like. Go in these doors. And I'd circle the doors. Right. And, and then go up, you know, or, you know, what door she should go in to go to the elevator to get her upstairs easy. Right. Well, those things seem like so easy. And with automation, we, we build that messaging out one time for all our patients. But when that patient who's got a lot of back pain and they're really worried and they're trying to decide, are you the right person for them or not? When they get that message two hours before their visit, right? And it has a picture. It's exactly what it looks like from the street. And it really helps them find your office easier. The amount of trust that builds in that patient is huge. And I think that that trust 
is more important than the amount of empathy you build on that first visit. Like trust supersedes empathy, but that trust also becomes like, they're now more likely to give you a, a online review. They're more likely to send their friend in. If there's any billing issue, they're a whole lot more uh, willing to listen to the explanation, right? Versus I'm sure you, you've had two kids in the last, whatever, five years, right? Like some of these, some of these visits I went to with my wife and our kids, I'm like, dude, the customer service is at zero here. Like I got a, I got a story there. Horrible. Uh, yeah. Our, our last child, um, when he was born, our pediatrician was not available. So they sent in one of the other pediatricians in the group, you know, a group of 300 pediatricians and she comes in listens to his heart. Oh, there's something going on here. We're going to run some tests, probably normal, like just real quick. And we're like, okay, you know, she usually goes away, but we got to check. And and so they then go and they run all these tests and do all this stuff. And uh, essentially everything's normal. Um, but then I ended up getting a $15,000 bill because of it, because we had paid the deductible for my wife under the birth, but once it was a non-birth related thing, it, oh. it then kicked into the family deductible. Yeah. So instead of paying 7,500 for the, for the birth, it was more like 16,000 for the whole thing. Yeah. And nowhere along that line, did they tell me what they were going to do that it was going to call, like it was this whole thing. And we had to go to a follow-up and fortunately he's fine. And I don't mind spending yeah. the money on, on my kids and all that, but where, at what point do you make a, like an 8,000, cause it was a difference of $8,000, an $8,000 buying decision that happened in like minutes without actually communicating what they were going to do, why are they going to do it? How are they going to do it? What right. are ramifications? Like all the things, right? It was just was the yeah. worst communication. It was so frustrating. Whereas if yeah. they would have communicated with me through the process, I would have written the check and smiled doing it because I know we were getting good care and I know why right. they were doing it. And it just, they lost my trust and the hospitals don't care. I get it. Yeah. Um, but, but as it, soon as that occurred, like for everybody listening, as soon as that occurred, everything from that point forward ha now has extra friction in it to solve it. it like, cause let's say that you at some point owe them $2,000. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obvious you have the money to, to pay them this amount. Right. Uh, and they want to collect it. But is there now like this resistance of like, all right, I'm, I'll pay this. Like, don't push me. I'll slow pay. Like, because there's this relationship has changed. And at the same time, if I ask you after that point, after that financial thing, are you sure your son is getting the best care? There's now this question in your mind, right? So now we're throwing totally throw out the placebo or whatever it is when a parent is caring about a kid. And those are the things we're thinking about. Like, how can we provide these communication strategies and methods so that we get all of these things working in our favor? We get, we maximize the placebo effect, right? We build up that trust. Like, and I think you have a great point. Like what we do in chiropractic doesn't vary that much. I mean, a pediatrician seeing kids on day one, like when things go wrong, they go crazy wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, it's, it's pretty standard. So what are the messages we can build into our system to reassure those patients and then build up that crazy amount of trust so that when they have another injury a year from now, there's they're not thinking about who else should I see or who who's closer than Kevin Christie, right? They're like, I don't, I don't care that I move 20 minutes further. He's the guy I trust and I'm gonna go to. And, you know, my friend, I think it was a diagnostic, it was communication affecting the diagnoses, but Holy smokes, when you start looking into it, the amount it affects all these business operations and the finances. And how many pay, uh, how many of your clients, Kevin, complain about people not finishing their care plans? Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, I, I this dude's supposed to come in 15 times. He came nine. And I'm like, well, is he swimming in a pool of trust? Like, does mm -hmm. he have so much trust with you? Does he explain things? And I'll give you a tip there, by the way. Um, sorry, I know I'm all over the place, Kev, but one of the interesting studies we came along, um, you know, downloaded like 60 or 70 different studies all about patient communication. One was a diabetes clinic. And what they did is they, when people got first diagnosed with diabetes, they gave them five things that they had to remember. And most, it was like five things about foot care, right? They're like, watch out for this. And these are mostly seniors and geriatric patients. Like, here are the five points. Then 
some of the people they interviewed within the next hour, right? They had a team of researchers interviewing within, within the hour. What do you remember? Some at the four hour mark, some at eight and some at 24 hours, right? No matter who it was, like at one hour, some of it was forgotten and some of it was already remembered incorrectly, right? By 24 hours, most of it was forgotten and that which was remembered was remembered incorrectly. It's like, was I supposed to clean my foot twice a week with a wire brush or something? Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember. And you're like, no, what? we never talked about that. So what the researchers did for an intervention, which is kind of interesting, they they gave them these tips in the office, right? Verbal communication. Then at the 24-hour mark, they sent them a text message with a, just a recap of what's going on. The retention of what we're doing and why we're doing it was actually higher than the group that they interviewed one hour after the appointment. So what I'm saying is, as they leave your office, it's going down, 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 down. Send that 24-hour post-visit uh, message. And now the amount of information retention goes higher than it initially was, right? Well, the good news there is, what does it take to send out a text message with a recap of what we found in your exam, right? Mm -hmm. Almost nothing. And what is it doing? It's reassuring and explaining to the patient why we're doing that why it's so important to come in 15 times or why we want to be on a three times weekly schedule. And yet everybody complains about people not coming in enough, but we have these very cheap and easy solutions, AKA two way text messaging yep. to solve those things that would result in better outcomes, right? If the patient comes in for the 15 times, they're going to do better. I'm going to look like a better doctor. Their, their spouse or partner is going to think that, everything's better, right? The money is more worth it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it what, just affects everything. Let's take a short break for one of our great sponsors, TrackStat. It is a new type of software plugin for your EHR that combines patient communication, marketing, automation, and statistics with patient and employee tracking. Built by chiropractors for chiropractors, it shows your team what to focus on each day. See patient visit habits, missing information, unpaid bills, insurance collection, visit average, and more. Great visibility of data so you can focus on filling your office with your best patients. When you can see what your staff and patients are doing or not doing and take action accordingly, your profits naturally grow. Take TrackStat for a test drive in your office with our free trial. Not a techie, no problem, we can help. To get started, on your free trial, visit trackstat.org and watch the demo. That is trackstat.org. One of the things we've been doing recently is um, sending out a welcome video after the fact too, is where it's like, you know, 30 to 45 seconds and kind of selfie style. And hey, mm -hmm. you know, John, it's Dr. Christie here. It was a pleasure meeting you yesterday and kind of just, you know, welcoming them and, you know, letting them know some of the reiterating some of the steps and then, and then sending that to them, not through, I don't know if your, your program has this capability, but um, it's going through email at this point for what we're doing, mm -hmm. but it's just been a nice little touch point. We get some, some good uh, feedback from that as well. Is that something that yeah. you've talked to people? Yeah, we about have and that capability and we send it typically through text. Yeah. So basically what the research says is anytime you can text, do it like there's yep. no downside to, as long as it's two-way text messaging one-way text messaging is not communication but two-way text and it's just if you think about everybody you know like are they more likely to read their texts and respond or their email like text is always better so if you can we have that capability you record it one thing i would tell you to try kevin is i think it's awesome that you're doing these selfie style videos and people that personal connection and the fact takes you 15 seconds i think just bought you five to 10 extra visits, right? Yeah. They're like, this is unbelievable. And by the way, if the person mentions their pet's name and you mention it in the video, that the trust level just shoots oh, off yeah. the charts. Oh that's God, good. like that's, yeah, it, it's incredible. Anyways, um, I would encourage you at some point, maybe try sending that out before they come in. So if you're looking at who's coming in today and you send out a quick, you know, hey, Kevin, this is Dr. Josh. I'm looking forward to seeing you today at 1140. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll be working with me. I'm going to ask you some questions, but you know, we want to take care of you, right? So let's say it's a 10 second video, 15 second video. The, the amount of anxiety that reduces mm -hmm. and the increase in show rates, it's, it's yeah, the most that, profitable thing you'll do at any point during the day. 
That's a great idea. And, and I'm sure you'll say a lot of things in this episode that are worthwhile, but that might be number one for sure. If someone just does that one thing, I think that would be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we tell our clients, like, again, prognostic communication. So like a picture of the building and where to park, it's huge, especially if you're like, uh, in some like downtown area where parking's a nightmare, or mm -hmm. I had a patient parked in the wrong lot, got towed one time that does not build trust. I'll, I promise you that. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, but explaining those things before they run into the problem, as if mm -hmm. you're explaining it to your 78 year old grandmother. Okay. Not like Kevin, you've pulled into your parking lot 10,000 times, right? You know, which way to turn and where, you know, they don't know that this is their first time. So if you explain those things, and then I always say, like, if nothing else, send out a map link the day before mm -hmm. just to make sure they have the correct map link. I don't know if you ever run into this. For some reason, Apple Maps put our office across the street. So you get these phone calls. People, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm in front of your office and there's no sign here. And I'm like, what do you see? I see a liquor store. And I'm like, <laughs> well, hey, don't make any personal judgments about me and my what I call my office. But actually, the liquor store is across the street from me, you know, <laughs> but it's just, it doesn't happen as much anymore, but you still see these reports of like Google maps, getting people in the wrong location, just get the right location and send it out to them. Yeah. Or driving no off mountains. Yeah, that's right. So, actually, yeah. you know, we need to do something like that because, uh, you know, we have an issue. We're in the South building of a two building unit. There's North and a South. Mm -hmm. You, if you enter into one building, you can't get to the other one. It's firewalled there. So you got to go back out and go. And then ironic like the the name of our street we're on is north military trail but that's the name of the street and we're in the south building people assume because we're on north military trail they go automatically into north building and it's just a yeah. mess and we you know we yeah. tell them over the phone sometimes but it'd be good to actually shoot a tour of like here here's the front of the parking lot you can actually park in the back and you like walk back there and then you go to the elevator and we're right up here in the Huge. south building <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm gonna yeah I mean, think about that when your wife was super pregnant. We we had this appointment. So it was like a, a medical office, so super long and skinny. And we parked on the left side because it looked like the main entrance, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the doctor's office we were going to was a completely all the way across. And I remember my I was like, my wife's going to deliver this baby halfway between the elevator and that office. Like it was just when you have a super pregnant wife, it's so long. And we forget about that. The first time somebody comes in your office... They're not jogging. <laughs> they're not yeah. coming into your office because they're feeling great, right? Mm -hmm. They're in pain, hence why they schedule that appointment. And if that's the case, the brain's not working right. It's not easy to navigate. So if they enter that north building and they're trying to make it to the south and get to that firewall, they're probably pissed as hell. Yeah. So now when they come into your office for the initial visit, you don't know that they, in the last five minutes, have been pissed off for three different reasons. And that affects the the history like it has to right yeah. so that's what we're trying so, to prevent is is communicate as best you can i think your your scenario is perfect to address yeah so basically improving communication which then you know builds rapport when you mm -hmm. build rapport and trust then you're going to get again better communication from the patient and ultimately you're going to you're going to get better clinical information from them that's going right. to have better outcomes. Obviously, yeah. sometimes it's just, you know, getting the elbow better a few visits quicker or getting it better in general, or it can be life and death sometimes, unfortunately, like with what you and you yeah. know, experience with your friend. And, uh, you know, obviously that can come up in our practice as chiropractors. We, we could miss that. And, and it could be a communication thing. Obviously, that's the uh, worst case scenario, obviously. Yeah. I mean, we, we shove our chips into the, in the center of the table. So often, so like, let's say that you have that patient goes into the wrong building, mm -hmm. has to go all the way downstairs and they have really intense back pain with ridiculopathy, right? They're hurting every step they take. They went in the wrong building, they're coming out, they're going up to your office. Now they're late for their appointment because of all the time it took them and they're embarrassed. And let's say that your front desk staff's just a little, they're hustling. So they're maybe a little short at the front. Now you sit down with that person. And you ask, Mrs. Johnson, I got to ask you this uncomfortable question. Do you ever have any incontinence when you stand up, right? Do you ever pee your pants when you stand up? If that person says no, we take that as the word of God. We think, oh, it's 100% reliable. No, no, no. What you have is somebody that's pissed off, embarrassed. They're embarrassed for being late. 
they're uncomfortable, they're this, and you're asking them a really high, 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 high trust question in a low trust environment, mm-hmm. right? What would you say? What would I say? I'd be like, no, nah, that doesn't happen because I don't want to deal with the bullshit that's going to come. Excuse my language. I don't want to deal with the BS that's going to come after this if I say yes. But as you know, and I know that completely changes our diagnostic picture completely, right? And mm-hmm. we're just like, no, okay, moving on. And we start treating otherwise. And I'm like, man, that happens way too often. Mm-hmm. And I think a better method is do everything you can to just crank up the trust level so that when you ask that, it's more likely you're going to get an honest answer. It's probably still under 50%, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, no, unfortunately, but at least we can improve it. But, you know, I like yeah. how you're framing this of, of everything because- you know, we've talked about communication on this podcast before. Everybody kind of talks about patient communication, mm-hmm. but I don't, th- we haven't definitely dove into this angle where we're really trying to build that trust because it's going to help with better, better clinical outcomes in general too. Uh, not yeah. just, you know, better adherence and those things. There's, there's a lot of benefits to communication as we know, but this is yeah. a, a definitely a unique take on that, which, which I love now. Um, let us know how you're helping with that. Like what's your platform doing? What's, what's the name of it? What are some of the ways this can actually enhance trust? I know it does through communication, but I'd love to hear a little bit more of the details Mm -hmm. of the actual platform. Yeah. So our platform is called trust driven care. So trustdrivencare.com. You can check it out there. And at its core, it's based, like I said, two-way text messaging and the research is that is the key to all change. If you're not two-way text messaging, I would say, do that first with any platform is going to improve your clinical outcome and it's going to grow your office. So we, we did that. We have this two-way text messaging. And then once you have that, the, once you establish that with your client, and I'm going to tell your listeners right now, do not, do not do anything to ever fracture that relationship. Like that is being led into the, you know, inside the kimono, do not do anything to get that blocked because that's when you really get screwed. But if you have that two-way text messaging, do everything you can to build up that relationship. So our system has the ability to send, like I said, those personalized videos, those selfie mm-hmm. style, just a little, hey, I, Kevin, I just want to follow up after today. It was a pleasure meeting you. Give Scruffy a, a scratch for me. Or what's your what's your dog's name, Kev? I don't have one anymore, unfortunately. Oh, no. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. Last year, last November, she lived a great life. 12, uh, one yeah. Reiner as, as you yeah, know, I remember other people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so great dog. Her name was right, Tally. So, Tally. Kevin, it's Dr. Josh. I want to follow up with yesterday's pleasure to meet you. And listen, I'm really sorry to hear about Tally, right? Yeah. Instant trust, right? So we have everything we have after that point in our system is really an extension of that two-way text messaging. So some other ways it might work is maybe you want to build a form to c- collect information. So like we have some functional medicine providers and some aesthetic medicine providers that use our system. They collect a lot of information. And a lot of that stuff doesn't yet need to be EHR type information, right? Your EHR should hold medical stuff. Um, uh, so we can do forms and surveys. We can also send links to, I know you're a fan of like online courses, right? That's mm-hmm. another great way to build trust. So if you if you ever have a situation where you know somebody has a complicated case or like golfers, triathletes, like some of the athletes you work with, mm-hmm. if you want to further build that relationship, send them a uh, a little online course about um, you know how to keep their back healthy or whatever. We can build and host those online courses like a Kajabi that type of yep. system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, people can host their website on us because that website is a big part of your communication, um, and then. We think it's important on the front end to make sure that people can reach you and reach out to you. So like uh, web chat. So if somebody goes to your website and it's like, do you have any questions? You'll be shocked at how many people are not scheduling visits for a single seemingly stupid question, right? Like, well, I, I have a client. He has on the same day, got two questions. I know you're a chiropractor, but do you treat hips? Mm-hmm. I know you're a chiropractor, but you treat shoulders, right? And it's like, of course, <laughs> like to us, that's a course, but to people that, so installing that web chat and then, you know, making it easy for your front desk staff. So bring in all those communications, all the two-way text messages, all the responses, the web chats, all that to a single unified, we call it the conversation tab. Yeah. So you just see where everybody's communicating. If they send you a message on Facebook, it comes to the same place. If they make a comment on your 
Google reviews, it comes to the same place because trying to just make it easy so that we do take those actions to build trust, you know? One of the things I recommend too, because we had uh, uh, we had a double whammy of, of issues with a particular new patient, uh, but, you know, educate your front desk too on, on what to, to kind of defer to you. Um, we had a scenario where we had this uh, elderly new patient come in in a wheelchair, um, went to the wrong building <laughs> in a wheelchair, got yeah. over to ours, kind of frustrated, comes in, has a condition I can't treat. And, and my front desk had said, yeah, we treat that. And it's just like, uh, you know, um, so we had a conversation in front desk, yeah, mistakes happen, but it was kind of a double whammy. So definitely try to get, I know, I know that can be hard and, and typically yeah. Uh, we do a good job of filtering some of those complicated ones and she'll message us, Hey, do you treat this? And this is just one that kind of slipped through the cracks for sure. Um, yeah. But the communication broke down in multiple ways there. I don't mind sharing our, yeah. our mishaps, uh, but yeah, they're the, that one, they're the things that make us better. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And the, the other thing along with that, since you're talking about employees is like, when we're talking about like online courses and texting, don't neglect how much that can make a difference internally. Right. So, mm -hmm. You think about you, how many interns have you had over the years or how many associates? Yeah. You could build out online courses to train your internal staff, right? Like, mm -hmm. hey, if you're working the front desk, you need this insurance module and you need this customer service module. And maybe in the back, they need a rehab module and they need a diagnosis module. Allowing those people to go into that and maybe over the course of your business, there'll only be 10 people that ever access that course. But God dang, it's going to be such a huge amount of education that you don't have to do. And just like we can monitor clients going through these programs, like who's actually accessed it or who clicked into chapter three, you can see it with your own staff and team. And it allows you to put together, I mean, you know, like mm -hmm. when you have educated staff, it's unbelievable how much yeah. breathing room you get in clinic. And I'll tell that the clinic, going back to the clinic, Jim Hybrid, the keystone to that whole thing is a really well-educated CA slash trainer. Like that's, it's not the space. It's not the dumbbells or whatever. It's that trainer. And that's mm -hmm. what gives you uh, the freedoms that Kevin Christie talks about in his masterminds, like well, time freedom, financial mas freedom. Yeah. Speaking of mastermind, uh, Kurt had a good saying about what you just talked about was somebody asked like, oh, I hate spending that much time training someone and they leave. And he's like, I'd rather have someone I train really well leave than someone I didn't train well stay. <laughs> so Absolutely. Yeah. It really stuck with me for that, for, for sure. Yeah. 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 So we just really look at all those methods of communication and, you know, it comes back to just making sure it's actually occurring. And if I were saying one thing, I would say like two-way text messaging. And then, like I said, prognostic communication, meaning send out the message before they end up in the wrong building or before they parked in the wrong area or before, you know, uh, whatever it is, before they realize they have to get their ticket validated for parking or whatever. It, yeah, it can be a lot of things. It could be like a proper attire because we're going to be doing yeah. some rehab. Like there's there's a lot of little things that can can happen. I, sure. I recently, I'm going to kind of leave it at this on, on another high note of communication. I recently was at an, a facility in Atlanta and they sent me an email with like the person actually in the airport walking to the sky train. It was like a 10 minute video, but like going mm -hmm. through the whole thing of like getting to their facility, it was easy to get there. It was like right off, right by the airport. But it really was helpful. I watched the whole damn thing. And then when I got to the airport, I was like, okay, I'm going to go here, you know? And it just yep. was like a touch point that you don't see too often. And, right. and I found that remarkable. And I think ultimately we're, we're trying to be remarkable and having great communication, whether it be, you know, verbally or using tools to, to do that. Uh, like you said, you're going to build that trust and say, okay, this is a, this is a first class operation and a first class doctor that um right. is, is 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 real real deal and, and i'm going to be able to share with them what's going on and, I, and i'm gonna have confidence in their clinical decision making whereas the opposite of that like you said it just erodes everything including communication yeah. in the treatment room so uh, i love yeah. it man how how can they find out more about this i know you gave the website again but give that again and i'd, I'd love to yeah. send that to so, them and i'll put it in the show notes yeah uh, trustdrivencare.com, trustdrivencare.com. And if they want to schedule a demo, that'll be with me and I'll show them kind of how to work it. And, um, you know, uh, that that's the best way to get familiar with it. And then 
start with the things that really make an impact. Like if for you, it's a, a video. If we can just get that video done about how to enter the South building and not the North, like mm -hmm. the one or two or five patients a month that don't do that. We end up with a whole bunch better business a year later, you know? So, so when I want to chat with you, I'm just going to go there and schedule a call with you. You can go to my website when you want to talk to me. Yeah, that's right. That way we, we don't have to play phone tag. I schedule a podcast with you and then you schedule a demo and some in the middle. We're, we're still friends, man. Perfect. I love it, man. Hey, this was great catching up and uh, we'll have to do it again. And obviously we'll have to have some more uh, in-person and phone calls uh, I love it, before Kev. it's too late. All right. All right, man. It was a pleasure talking with you. Have a good one. See you, buddy. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And if you want to make the shift from busy, broke, and broken to time-free and cash confident, or you just want to continue with the exponential growth, check us out at modernchiropracticmarketing.com. Look at the MCM Mastery tab, watch the short video on there, and check out what we are doing now for evidence-informed chiropractors. We are equal parts coaching and marketing done for you. Yes, you shoot some videos. We help you with campaign strategies and ideas and really become a thought leader in your community. You shoot those videos, you send them to us. We produce, edit, and brand them to you. Then we distribute them through all of your channels. We also take them and we turn it into one good blog per month. And every other month, we have Darcy Sullivan producing a robust blog with a topic that you pick from her database to help with your SEO. So we essentially become your content marketing agency to make sure your practice is always having ethical, elegant content marketing to help grow your practice. On the coaching side, we also help you with everything from marketing ideas to business, communications, finances, anything practice growth and really try to help prevent you from being stuck on that island. And we hold you accountable. We have a great group of doctors that are just doing amazing things. And we look forward to help you out to take that next step in your practice. So again, check us out at modernchiropracticmarketing.com and learn more.